Right, in today's lesson, we are going to describe the role of the wave function in predicting the probability implicit in the position of an electron in a wave. Um, that probably doesn't make much sense right now, but hopefully it will by the end of this lesson. We will also be describing the uncertainty principle for energy time and position momentum. So there are three main ideas behind quantum physics that we're covering in the IB. The first one was wave particle duality by De Bruyne, which was fairly straightforward. The second one is this idea of quantum probability, which we're going to be looking at now. And then we'll be moving on to the third big idea, which is quantum uncertainty. Now, the IB does not require you to know these ideas to any depth at all but they seem quite insistent that you can use the relevant equations. So we're going to focus on that and try and avoid the more conceptual murky territory, which unfortunately is the more interesting of, of the aspects. But let's stick to what the IB is going to examine us on first, and then we can in class maybe examine some bigger ideas. So there are three big ideas in physics in the IB syllabus. The first one is wave particle duality. By De Bruyne. The second one is uh, what we're going to go to now, which is the idea of quantum probability. And the third one is um, uncertainty, quantum uncertainty. So let's start with quantum probability. Now, De Bruyne left us with this uh, big idea that electrons are actually waves and particles at the same time. But if they are indeed waves, waves of what? Sound waves, for example, are vibrations of matter, right? So it's a, an energy that's transferred with the movement of particles. Light waves are fluctuations in electromagnetic fields. And matter waves, what are they? Well, the idea that Edwin Schrodinger uh, came up with was that they were, in fact, a wave of probability. Well, Schrodinger and Max Born together came up with that final conclusion. So let's explore this idea of a probability wave a little bit more closely. Now, this is Schrodinger's equation. It's a linear partial differential equation, which you do not need to know that much about, thankfully. In fact, I'm only showing it to you because it's a bit weird to talk about an equation without actually looking at it. So no, it's not in the syllabus, but it's a big hefty thing which you can see gives a um, the shape of a wave. Basically, the whole point of this equation is that it gives you the shape of a wave as a function of x position. And this funny looking symbol here, psi, is your wave function. And what's really interesting is that this function gives you a measure of probability. It provides you with a positional interpretation of the electron in terms of its probability. So let me translate that into something that makes sense. If this is the wave function for an electron, you are basically saying that it looks like this in terms of its probability. So you have an electron and the chances of it being in position X here is zero, okay? this wave function, so remember psi is your wave function, and the wave function is actually a measure of the probability. So here we've got the wave function equal to zero. And then if we move a little bit here, what is the likelihood, what's the probability of this, of the electron being in this position? And you can see that it's slightly larger, right? The wave function value is greater. And then if we go back to here, we can see that the wave function goes back to zero. So the chances of your electron being there are zero, and your chances of your electron being here are zero, 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 zero. zero. So where is the position where the electron is most likely to be? And you should be able to tell that it's here because that is where the value of the wave function is greatest, okay? I think it's probably easier to show you the graph. It makes more sense than most of the definitions. So. Uh, Schrodinger and Born came up with this idea of a probability um, variable which gives you a picture of the wave in terms of its probability. Now, what I mean by picture of a wave is that this is still a valid um, way of conceptualizing the electron as a wave. So I could apply quite easily de Broglie's equation to this wave 
its wavelength would be this approximately, assuming of course that it was constant. But let's say if I wanted to know the wavelength of this electron wave, it would be this bit, this distance here, or this bis distance here, etc. So we're still treating the electron as a wave, but the y-axis is actually a probability. That's where it all gets a bit weird. Don't worry about it too much. Now, um, the full um, relationship is when we apply the wave function squared, which becomes proportional to the probability. Now, this allows us to take this equation and look at its absolute value. So let me find an equation of that. Mm -mm -mm, an example. It's got to be an example somewhere in my presentation. Here we go. So now psi squared um, gives us a much clearer view of the actual probability of an, the electron position. Um, and so this is the value which is proportional, gives us a more direct measure as to the probability. I'm going to go back to here because this is the correct IB definition of what the wave function is. And check this out. By definition, a wave function is either Definition number one, a function whose absolute squared value may be used to calculate the probability of finding a particle near a given position, right? So that's one way. Don't have to say probability, don't have to say um, proportional, just related to. Or you could just say a wave function is a quantity related to the probability of finding an electron near a given position, near a given position, or at a given position. Now, this illustrates just how um, basically the IB is not interested in you having this full understanding of this very, very obscure and complex idea. Um, the wave function, it's more correct to say that psi squared is related to probability, but it's okay to just generally relate the wave function to probability. I hope that makes sense, because not much in this chapter will now, what I want you to do a little bit to uh, fully internalize what I'm explaining is for you to watch this video because he does a much better job than I think he does a much better job of explaining it than I do. And I don't want to just rip him off. So um, have a listen to this video and um, and see if you fully understand how to use. I mean, the important thing is that you know how to use this graph to um, to get uh, measures of position and probability. Now, these cloud diagrams are another way of looking at this wave function because they express um, the probability in terms of the de density of the particle diagrams. So you might have seen diagrams like this associated with um, the wave function and probability. Basically, the density gives you a measure of how likely it is to find a particle in there. Now, as you know, or you've seen in the previous videos, the issue or the big issue, tricky question we have is trying to decipher this idea of wave particle duality. Well, I'm not going to go that far, but we will relate it to the wave um, equation. As seen in the previous video, a uh, particle that is, well, basically when you have a diffraction and interference patterns, you can have a wave or a particle at the same time. And the sheer process of observing the result influences the outcome. So how does that affect the wave function? Well, once you observe, what you're doing in that point is you are collapsing the wave function. And uh, when electrons were fired at a double split, they pass through as waves and you see an interference pattern. But when you're watching the slits, you collapse the wave function and the electrons pass through the slits as particles, giving no interference pattern. So basically your probability becomes one, like the chances of it being, a, um, the chances of being in that particular uh, place become absolute and you no longer have that probability aspect to it. So the wave function is, that's how you refer to the wave function being collapsed. Okay, so here's a, an interesting link to the new scientist um, if you're interested in this topic. And now we're going to look at something called the uncertainty principle, which was Heisenberg's idea initially, um, considering this idea of understanding um, the exact position, exact velocity of a particle wave. Um, and really, basically, underlying this, basically, the, the underlying this idea that in quantum physics, these classical ideas are kind of nonsense. But we're going to bring it to a very, very basic level. It's best to think of a particle or a wave 
that is traveling as having uh, momentum and position. But if you can pinpoint the position, then you cannot with certainty state what its momentum is, right? I hope that makes sense. Similarly, we can, we can, we can have a certain we can with certainty say how long a position a particle will be in a specific place. But once we do that, we do not know how much energy it has, right? And vice versa. Now, these equate in very simple terms to um, your uncertainty in energy times the uncertainty in time are equal to or greater than Planck's constant over 4 pi. Similarly, your uncertainty in x times your uncertainty in momentum are equal and greater to greater than Planck's constant over 4 pi. If you're finding that difficult to deal with, have a look at this video. It gives some really good examples of how to conceptualize that. Now let's apply this to something a little bit more observable. We have um, diffraction. Diffraction is a phenomenon by which the light spreads as it goes through a gap which is equivalent or smaller than the wavelengths. Now this gives a brilliant explanation of how the uncertainty principle um, can be visible um, seeing a diffraction pattern. So if you reduce the uncertainty in distance here, that would have a knock-on effect with momentum, and so therefore you would see a spreading, a diffraction. Um, have a watch of this video, and then we can discuss it in class. Now, what I'm going to do now is give you an overview of the kind of questions that you can come up with. The first one is a definition question, just being able to understand um, or be able to define the wave function itself and the idea of collapsing a wave function. These, these are important definitions. Now, a lot of questions revolve around just a picture of a wave function and being able to relate that to de Broglie. So this is a classic question here where you have a, a regular pattern in the wave function and then using de Broglie to work out the momentum of this wave. You've got the wavelength here, and using the wavelength, you can find the momentum easily. Similarly, with something like this. All of these graphs also enable you to predict the position, or the most likely position, of an electron in, um, in terms of its position. So that's the wave function. In terms of the uncertainty principle, a lot of questions are fairly straightforward in that they simply want you to apply the equation in its maximum sense. So if we look here, we have um, uncertainty in position times uncertainty in momentum equals greater than h over pi over 2. So what we're looking at is the absolute, the maximum, so when it's equal to. So when um, x, uncertainty x times uncertainty p equals h over 4 pi. So the questions that you have to do generally involve the use of that equation or the application of that equation. So if you see that here, you can see here an electron moves in a straight line with a constant speed. The speed can be measured to a precision of 0.10%. So your uncertainty would be 0.10% of the speed, okay? Or even better, if you have a, a, an electron in a box, for example, here, the graph shows a variation with position of a wave function of an electron confined in a region of linear size 1 times 10 to the minus 10. The uncertainty in position would be all of this because it's confined. It's somewhere in there, but we don't know where. So that would be the uncertainty in position right and then i think pretty much that's it have a go at these questions um, to really understand how to apply the equations and like i said we can talk about the more um more the trickier theoretical aspects later